Please welcome Alan Dershowitz. Thank you very much. I am thrilled to be here at this bipartisan opposition to a very, very bad deal. And the opposition must be bipartisan. This is not a bad deal only for Republicans and conservatives. It is a bad deal for Democrats. It is a bad deal for liberals. I am here opposing this deal as a liberal Democrat. And I urge my fellow Democrats and my fellow liberals to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of us who oppose this deal as bad for America, bad for world peace, bad for the security of the Middle East. We must always make sure that the security of Israel never depends on the outcome of an American election. Israel must always be a bipartisan issue. Its support and its defense must join Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives. Those of you who are Republicans work hard to assure Republican support. Those of us who are Democrats have an even harder job to assure support from within our party and among our constituents and friends. This here today is a great display of democracy in action. This is the way democracy should work. I contrast that with the way the bill is being processed today in Congress. That is the worst example of democracy being distorted, democracy being abused, democracy being ignored. After all, look at the situation the President of the United States has placed us in. He has presented us with a bad deal, and he says it will be even worse if it's rejected by Congress. Assume for the moment he's right about that. Imagine the choice to which he has put us between bad and worse. That is not the way democracy should operate. This deal is essentially a treaty. It binds the United States in a multinational way. This treaty should be submitted to the Senate for two-thirds approval, but the President won't do that because he knows it would be defeated. If it's not a treaty, it should at least be an executive legislative agreement, which is another constitutionally permissible method. In that case, it would require a majority of the House and the Senate. But no, the President has taken this case out of the democratic process and has said this deal will go through unless two-thirds of the Senate and two-thirds of the House disapprove it. That's not the way democracy should work. Democracy should be by majority rule, and the majority of the Senate and the House, both of which were elected more recently than the President of the United States, and both of which reflect the current mandate of our country, are opposed to this deal. Now, even Tom Friedman of the New York Times, who generally does not support Israel's policies and the policies of Benjamin Netanyahu, acknowledged in today's Times that it was the decision to take the military option off the table and to allow Iran to negotiate with us as equals that brought about this very bad deal. Now, we've heard all kinds of cries of this is Munich and this is Chamberlain. Let me tell you, this is not Munich. The reason this is not Munich is when Munich decided that Czechoslovakia would be dismembered, Czechoslovakia did not have the ability to defend itself. And when the President of the United States tells Israel that it may be subject to the nuclear whims of Iran, the state of Israel does have the ability to defend himself. And I have to tell you, I have known Benjamin Netanyahu since 1973. 
we met at Israel's 25th anniversary, and Benjamin Netanyahu will not permit Iran to develop nuclear weapons that threaten the very existence of Israel. And the United States should not and will not prevent Israel from taking whatever actions it may have to take to defend its citizens. When I sat in the Oval Office with the President of the United States, I asked him the question directly, would you, Mr. President, ever outsource the defense of your people to another country? He said, no. I said, do you expect Israel to outsource its defense to another country? And he said, no. Israel has the ability to defend itself. Iran must never, ever be allowed to develop a nuclear arsenal, whatever it takes. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Professor Dershowitz. Thank you.